Welcome back folks. Looks like things are heating up quite quickly as President Trump has made some over the top statements and about what he would do in a retaliation. He's actually threatened the culture of Iran, not only its military installations, but its culture in general. And that's quite troubling because you generally do not want threats to be at innocent civilians or archaeological structures. Iran has a very ancient culture, and this is actually a church. What do you know? A church in Iran, a Christian church, the Armenian church, and you would hate to see something like this get destroyed because of a power play move. The Iranians have grieving the loss of one of their leaders with a red flag over their mosques. It's supposed to symbolize it's a blood flag, and they had three days of uh, mourning for Soleimani. Very interesting stuff. Actually, I was reading into what happened to Soleimani is that he was actually looking to de-escalate tensions, and it was kind of, people were thinking, a trap set by Saudi Arabia, who the Saudis were actually mad at Iran because of their oil fields. They feel like there was a connection there. So supposedly... They had sent a message to Iran that they'd be willing to de-escalate tensions in the region. And that Soleimani, he was welcomed there by the president of Iraq. This is why the Iraqi people are now, they pissed off. And the parliament of Iraq has just voted in favor of the United States leaving Iraq completely. They want to shut down the embassy. They want all the troops gone. They even want a boycott of American goods, and they want all bases closed permanently. And that was just voted on by the people of Iraq. Now, technically, it was voted on, but it has to be up to the prime minister, the president of Iraq, to carry that through. So now, what do you do if you're the United States? Are you going to go against the will of the democracy of the people of Iraq? Or are you just going to stay there? And say too bad. And this is a very awkward position for the United States to be in. Now we have this situation where the tensions are rising. And the Iranians, they pretty much, they believe a tit for a tat. An eye for an eye, Hammurabi. That's where the ancient Babylonian scrolls, they came from Persia. Eye for an eye. So one of their best favorite leaders is killed. What do you think that means when they say eye for an eye is they're probably going to want to go after Trump himself. He's really got to look out. I mean, I'm sure his own security is going to be increased. They've threatened about going after the White House. We also know the White House South Florida is also his West Palm Beach and Mar-a-Lago. Probably going to have to update their security there. That could be targeted with the submarine. Things are ratcheting up. Things are really getting... Harry over there. See, I've been following the DEFCON warning. The DEFCON currently, DEFCON 3. We are in DEFCON 3. Just to give you an idea, this the website, they're not overly exaggerating. DEFCON 3 is pretty serious. If you look at their DEFCON history, they just don't throw these around very easily. Well, we had DEFCON 2 in 1991 of the Gulf War. So we're really at one more level, and then you here's a major war in the Gulf. 1976 was a DEFCON 3. 1973, the Yom Kippur War. And then we have the Cuban Missile Crisis, DEFCON 2. So we are really at the brink. So I don't think I was really exaggerating yesterday when I was telling people to prepare for World War 3. Because you have to think now that Iran, with the loss of their dear leader, that they're going to want revenge And they've actually said specifically they don't want to target civilians. They're actually, I'm surprised, pretty level-headed. They want to think about going after military targets, but ultimately believe in eye for an eye. You just got to wonder what that entails. Things are really kicking up with Israel in the region. And this is what I really worry about because they are a rogue nuclear state. It looks like this chief of staff is saying we've been thinking about a limited confrontation with Iran. But when I think limited, you know what that lets me know? A very swift and decisive action. 
I would not be surprised that if Iran any move towards Israel, that Israel would be quick to nuke them. I could see that very well happening. When I hear limited, that's what I think, is they would throw a couple nukes. What would that do? Well, for one, you would have a complete destabilization of the Middle East. You would have these clouds of radioactive dust moving thousands of miles through the jet stream. You would have the downwinders from these clouds going to emergency alerts. And then you would ultimately be dragging Russia into the confrontation. It's a very strange relationship with Israel and Russia. On some points they agree, but Iran has been pretty close ally with Russia. I think that they could get dragged into this, and that's pretty frightening when you consider putting Russia at odds with the United States nuclear powers. So cooler heads hopefully will prevail. This looks like it's coming to a point where if it's not toned down, it's just going to keep heating up. I stand by my statements that you should probably be getting your passports in order. You should probably be looking at South America as a destination. You should probably be having a lot of extra food supplies built up. The basic essentials, really. And just prepare for an event. It's possible that an EMP could knock out the grid. This is what I was worried about with Hillary Clinton. I wasn't one of these anti-Trumpers. Back in 2016, if you follow my videos, I did a lot of videos telling you that we should worry about Hillary Clinton. Because I saw her, her Russian rhetoric and how she was the one that also said she wanted to go to war with Iran and was willing to do that with Russia as well. I saw a lot of shady stuff out of her and I made a lot of videos bashing Hillary because of stuff like this of war and I hate war.